Imagine you are a policymaker and you are trying to improve the healthcare system. Where do you start? In what stage of the process do you consider what the implementation of your policy will look like? Do you even have control of the implementation? The most common strategy in a policymaker's toolbox is forward mapping. Forward mapping of a federal policy might begin with a statement of congressional intent. It would then outline federal agency regulations and administrative actions consistent with that intent. It would devise a division of responsibilities between central and regional offices of the federal government, and each implementing unit would have a clearly defined mission. It would then state an outcome, usually by describing an observable effect on the target population. This approach misses one major point. Policymakers are not in control of organizational, political, and technological processes that affect implementation. Forward mapping reinforces the myth that implementation is controlled from the top. Luckily, there is another approach in the toolbox. Just like forward mapping, backward mapping shares the notion that policymakers have a strong interest in affecting the implementation process and the outcomes of policy decisions. But backward mapping is built on the understanding that policymakers don't have control. Backward mapping flips the implementation process on its head. It begins at the last possible stage, at the front lines, where the administrative processes meet the public. Jody Sanford, an implementation scholar at the University of Minnesota, has applied the backward mapping concept with the social welfare system. Through her research on the current safety net, she has found that the system is actually placing more burdens on low-income citizens, rather than making things better. Citizens earning at or near the minimum wage face considerable job instability. Conditions are challenging, job cycling, and layoffs are common. Without intervention, low-income workers' earnings remain low over the long term. Few low-income jobs provide benefits, neither retirement savings, nor health, nor dental. They struggle to meet basic needs. While some public policies and programs exist to help, large numbers of eligible families do not access them. Services that do exist are implemented through fragmented silos. These realities generate the need for more effective implementation. A backward mapping approach to redesign provides a way forward. The backward mapping approach illuminates four design principles that could be used to redesign the social welfare system. The first is a fair application of policy. Benefits need to be targeted to individual circumstances. Eligibility criteria need to be met and benefits distributed so they reach the targeted groups. The second revolves around accessible services. Since the job hours of folks at the margins of labor market rarely stick to the 9-to-5 schedule, work support programs should be fully accessible. Application processes should be user-friendly and accessible to a wide variety. Thirdly, support and services need to be appropriately matched. Frontline staff and citizens should speak the same languages and share cultural references. Finally, trustworthy information should be available to aid decision-making. People need help answering persistent problems they face, and trustworthy resources are priceless. They give people options when they have to respond to the unexpected. These four principles, when consistently implemented, would assist rather than hinder citizens navigating the low-wage labor market. In summary, backward mapping assumes problem-solving around complex issues requires maximizing decisions at the point where the problem is most immediate, where the policy meets the public. Even better, Backward mapping can be applied to many other issue areas, like education, transportation, health care, and so many more. The possibilities are endless, and the process is convertible. For more information on other policy and management topics, check out the Hubert Project at www.hubertproject.org.